Hey there, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be working on two practice problems. And basically, we're going to go over what we have learned so far in the C++ object oriented programming tutorial series. So for the first problem, the user inputs a certain amount of quarters, dimes, nickels and pennies. And then the program must calculate the total in quarters, dimes, nickels and pennies. So in this case, we have five quarters, six dimes, three nickels and seven pennies. So the user should input five, six, three, seven for these four coins. And our program should sum up the values and output how much money the user has. Okay, so that's the first problem. This one should be pretty simple. And then the next problem, we have the other way around. So instead of asking the user for how many quarters, how many dimes they have, we ask the user how much money they have, or ask the user just to input a value. So in this case, 2.54. And we tell the user how many quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies are needed to make up that value. And in this situation, we want to use the greedy method. So basically, you take the largest amount first and you try to deduct as much as you can. So in this case, we want to figure out how many quarters as much as possible can make up this value and then dimes, nickels and then pennies. So 2.54 is 10 quarters, zero dimes, zero nickels and four pennies. So that's with the greedy method. And if we had 1.88, we would get seven quarters, one dime, three pennies and 10.09. That's 40 quarters, one nickel and four pennies. OK, so this one will be a little trickier, but don't worry, we'll be going over the answers in this video. So here's the first problem. And then here's the second problem. OK, so why don't you do that and we'll come back and we'll work on it together. OK, so the first problem, we're asking the user to input four values. So when you ask the user to input four values, you kind of want to output something, output a text to request the user to let them know that we want an input. So we'll say C out. How many quarters do you have? And then we'll do C in, put in to Q. So Q is for quarters. And then we'll do the same thing with dimes, nickels and pennies. So dimes, nickels, and pennies. Okay, so we have our four coins. And now we have to sum up the value. So total is zero. So in this case, we'll say total equal 0.25 times Q, or let's do Q times 0.25 plus D times 0 0.10 plus N times 0 0.05, or in this case 0.05 and then plus p times 0 0.01 okay so just to go over this we ask the user how many quarters they have and then we put that value in dimes nickels and pennies and the total will be quarters how many they have times 0 0.25 dimes times 0 0.10 how many nickels they have times 0 0.05 and pennies times 0 0.01 okay so let's run a program so let's say five quarters six dimes three nickels and seven pennies so we get 2.07. Okay, let's try again. So 12 to 10 and 18, we get 3.88. So that's our second test case. And then finally, our last one, we have three, we'll put in zero for dimes, 19 nickels and 65 pennies. Great, so we get 2.35. All right, so that's the answer to the first problem. Now let's do the second problem. So we're given a total we want the user to enter an amount and that goes into total. And then we need to figure out how many quarters, how many dimes, nickels and pennies are required to make that amount. OK, so to find out how many quarters are needed to make that amount, you would just do Q equals total divided by 0.25. And then afterwards, so remember that uh, Q here is an integer. So when we do total divided by 0.25, we are doing 2.54 divided by 0.25 and this will give us 10 but it will have some decimal places at the end and let's see what that is actually so 2.54 divided by 0.25 we get 10.16 but because q is an integer we drop this decimal place so we do 10 only so this basically tells us that 10 quarters can fit into 2.54 and then we'll get four cents remainder after we do our subtraction so basically we'll do total minus equal q times 0.25 so this would give us 10 and then this would give us 10 times 0.25 which would give us 2.50 which we can subtract from total and we can do the same thing with 
the number of dimes, nickels, and pennies. So let's do that. So in this case, this is point one zero. Copy and paste this. Okay. So point zero five. And uh, don't forget your semicolons. So now we should get the total number of quarters, dimes and nickels and pennies needed to make that amount. And uh, that should be it. So let's run our program. So enter an amount. So let's do 2.54 and we get 10 quarters, zero dimes, zero nickels and three pennies. But wait a minute, we wanted four pennies. So what happened here? Let's see if the other ones work. So let's put 1.88. We get 7102. 7103. Hmm. And let's try 10.09. We get 40014. Okay, this one worked, but how come the first two didn't? Well, why don't we print out total? So if we print out total, we should expect to get zero because uh, after this last line, we have reduced the amount by the pennies so let's do mm, what happened here oh semicolon oh shit this is python sorry see out total okay let's run it so let's say 10.09 that one worked so we get what is this hmm let's try a different value 2.54 we get 0 0.00999.6. So we can see that there's something off with our math, but it's actually not our math. Our math, our logic is correct. What is off is when you do division or multiplication with numbers with uh, floating points uh, or numbers with decimal places, you get some loss in precision because the way numbers are stored in our machines, they're stored as bits. So you can't accurately specifically represent, in this case, if I hover over 0 0.01, you can see we have 21 at the end. So it's not exactly 0 0.01, which is why we have this remaining total as 0 0.00999996. So to get around this, we should avoid using floating point numbers completely. So to do that, we can just multiply by a factor of 100. Once we see in total, we can do total times equal 100 and then when we multiply by 100, when we do our division, we should multiply that division by 100 as well. So instead of uh, 20, uh, 0.25, we should do divided by 25. And the same thing for the rest of these. So now we got rid of the problem with the floating point numbers being represented uh, inaccurately. So now if I were to run my program, and do 10.09, we get 40 quarters, zero dimes, one nickels, four pennies. And if I were to do 2.54, we can now see 10 quarters, zero dimes, zero nickels, and four pennies. And just to test the last one, or the second one actually, we'll do 1.88, and we get seven quarters, one dimes, zero nickels, and three pennies. Okay, so that's how you would you know, get around that problem. And yep, that's the answer for the second practice problem. Hope you were able to do at least the first one and had a good idea on how to do the second one. I would assume that you had this issue that we talked about earlier with uh, the floating point numbers. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.